Welcome to the News House. I'm Amy Lippman. Today, we're here with Roz Savage to talk with her about her accomplishments as a world record-holding rower, as well as an environmentalist. She was the first woman to row by herself across the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. She was also named the National Geographic Adventure of the Year in 2010. Her experiences on the water and in life have led her to become an environmental advocate and speaker all over the world. Thank you for joining us today, Roz. So can you tell me a little bit about when you first started rowing at University College of Oxford? What made you decide to get into it and how did it affect your college life? When I arrived at Oxford, I decided I really ought to start doing some exercise. I hated physical education when I was at school. I even did Latin to get out of doing it. Um, but basically, I've always struggled with my weight and I wanted to be able to eat more without getting fat. So doing some exercise seemed the best way to do that. And rowing seemed like a good choice of sport because most people wouldn't have done it before. And I just took to it with all the zeal of the convert. Uh, probably to the detriment of my studies, I spent more time on the river than in the law library. And after those mo early morning outings, I found the law library was actually a really good place for a little snooze over the law books. Now, you worked in business for quite a few years. What made you decide to get out of that and change your life path? I was a management consultant for 11 years and the reason I went into it in the first place was firstly because I had a really big overdraft by the time I left Oxford and the job paid well um, and also I thought it'd be a good sort of broad job that would be a useful stopgap until I figured out what I really wanted to do when I grew up. The trouble was that 11 years later I still hadn't figured out what I wanted to do when I grew up and I was still in my stopgap and there was just this growing feeling of there being a mismatch between who I was in the inside and the person that I was pretending to be putting on my little suit and getting on the commuter train and going to the office. So I have to say when I left my last job in the city they didn't see me for dust. I was so out of there. Now what made you decide to row across an ocean let alone three of them? <laughs> well it was around that time when I was in the process of reinventing myself that I had an environmental epiphany and really realized for the first time that we just can't carry on as we are if we want the human species to have a long and happy and healthy future. And I was appalled that I had been so completely oblivious to this really rather obvious fact. And I thought I have to do something to get this word out to more people. And I wanted to find a slightly different platform, a different way of getting the message across to hopefully a different sector of the public. And um, so through a whole combination of circumstances, including a chance meeting with a guy who'd rowed across the Atlantic with his mother, um, I hit upon this crazy idea to row around the world to raise awareness of environmental issues. Uh, then I found out you can't actually literally row around the world because the winds and the currents don't match up in quite the right way. So I downscaled it to only rowing across the world's three largest oceans. And how did you prepare for those journeys? Um, when I signed up to do the Atlantic, I decided that for my first, rate, first row, it would be a good idea to do it as part of a race, so that I would have that sort of infrastructure and also an immovable start date, so that I couldn't um, shilly-shally around and put it off. So it was summer 2004 when I signed up to do the Atlantic rowing race that would start in November 2005. So I had just 14 months, which is not very long, to get an ocean rowing expedition together. Um, I had to raise money, buy a boat, get the boat all kitted out, get myself fit, um, learn how to navigate at sea, first aid, sea survival. Um, there were just so many different aspects to it. So I wrote myself the mother of all to-do lists. There were so many things on there. But I broke it down in such little pieces that there wasn't actually anything on there that was too big or too daunting. And so I just kind of gradually worked my way down the to-do list, ticking each thing off. And I won't say I got 100% of it done, but I got enough of it done to get me to the start line more or less ready. And what was a typical day like for you on the water? Um, I experimented a bit at the start with different shift patterns. Basically, I was finding it unbelievably difficult. So I settled into doing four shifts of three hours with about one hour off in between. So I'd wake up um, a, an hour or so before daylight, turn on the GPS, see where am I relative to where I went to sleep last night, um, eat a bit of breakfast and then get out for the first three hour shift. And then 
in the little breaks between each shift, I would have something to eat, uh, fill out my log book with how many miles I'd rode and what my latest latitude and longitude yeah. were, um, and kind of repeat ad nauseam until an hour or so after sunset. And then I would flop into my bunk and fall asleep after writing my blog every night, no matter how tired I was, because I was out there trying to talk about um, how to live more sustainably and how to live a happier life as well. I would religiously write my blog, even when all I really wanted to do was to get my head onto that pillow. What are a couple things that individuals can do to live greener? Um, wow, there are so many things. My, uh, one of my personal projects, having seen the effect of plastic pollution, particularly in the Pacific Ocean, is that I do everything I can to avoid using disposable plastics. So um, I don't drink bottled water. Um, tap water in this country is perfectly safe. Um, I don't use takeout cups from Starbucks or whatever. I always use my own mug. And I try and avoid Starbucks. But, um, and um, I don't use plastic bags. It, those three things are such easy little things that we could all start doing tomorrow. And it makes you feel so good when you and not throwing stuff into the trash. And every time you get that little glow of satisfaction, it just sort of reminds you that you're doing your bit for the future sustainability, not so much of the planet, but of human beings. Thank you so much for joining us today, Russ. It's been a pleasure, thank you.